Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another Dr. Cassette's Workshop project. In this first part of the video series, I'll be telling you the background story. I'll be telling you what has happened and what we're going to do. In the second part of the video series, we will then start messing about with the hardware. So if you don't want to hear me talking, you can go ahead and skip this first part and go straight to the second part. So a couple of months ago, I decided that I wanted to have a Lenovo ThinkPad to replace my Dell Latitude E4300 laptop that I had up until then and that I was taking with me to university every day. I really have to say, going with these uh, higher-ended business machines really is worth the extra money. If you're buying them second-hand, prices are quite acceptable. And it's just so much nicer to work with those laptops than to work with those uh, flimsy consumer things. However, the thing I never liked about the Dell was the screen. The contrast ratio was very, very poor. That's why I wanted to move on to something new. And it had to be a Lenovo ThinkPad because I just simply wanted to try one out. After doing a little bit of uh, looking around on eBay, I decided that I wanted to have a Lenovo ThinkPad X201 with the UltraBase docking station. That happened a couple of months ago and I took it to university for a few months and everything was fine. The thing is, to get to university I have to ride my bike for about 50 minutes to get from here to the train station. Then I have to drive with a train for about half an hour to Hanover and then I have another 10 minutes to go with the tram. So that's quite a, f uh, quite a bit of a journey for these laptops to go. Now, just recently, major, major accident happened. It was raining. And now usually it's not a huge, great big problem. You, you know, I put on some rainproof clothing and take the bike and that's it. Now, the thing I didn't know, that day there was actually an official warning out for... Uh, heavy, heavy rainfall. But we do have a, a measurement uh, thingy over here in our garden, so I do know that uh, in the end we had about 30 liters of rain falling onto just one square meter in not even two hours. So you can imagine that was some pretty damn heavy rain and I was going right through that on the bike. Now, rainproof clothing did not do anything. I got soaking wet. The thing that I realized in the train, your backpack is not rainproof. And your backpack contains not only a book to read, which, by the way, had turned into a nice big sponge, it also contained the laptop. And, yep, it did get wet. It didn't look all that bad at first, so I was like, well, okay, uh, just take the battery out, let it dry off, and it should be fine. So that's what I did. Remove the battery and uh, dried it off with a paper towel, and for the rest of the day I just let it sit in round. In the evening, when I was back home, I said, well, okay, this thing now looks dry. So I put the battery back in, turn it on, it booted up, Windows started absolutely without any problems, so I was like, okay, no harm done, it's all fine. Then I waited another day, and then the day after that day, powered up the laptop, and you've guessed it, nothing happened. I tried powering up the laptop on the AC adapter, and, well, it would work, for just a few minutes. Then it would just shut off, just completely out of nowhere. So you powered it up again and uh, it would shut off even quicker. And eventually, after quite a few repetitions of the same process, it would just go off right after you turn it on. And then, after that, it would not even light up the, um, the power adapter indicator anymore. So, what I did, as you can see, if I flip this thing open, 
what I did was I took it all apart. As you can see, there is not a whole lot in there anymore. And um, I went ahead and took the heat gun to this and said, well, okay, there must be some residual moisture in there somewhere. And so I heated this up real well. I think I probably brought it up to like 100 degrees or something. And after that, it actually started working again for pretty much exactly 40 minutes. Then it shut off again and I was like, well, okay, that cannot be saved anymore. This thing is bad. Which is really sad because, uh, well, for one thing, it cost me a hell of a lot of money. 400 euro I paid for this thing, including the docking station, both items being mint in the box. I do actually have the original box for both items. And uh, this is a fairly high-ended unit, pretty good specifications, I'd say. It does uh, have a Core i7 processor in there. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM. It came with a 320 gigabyte uh, hard disk drive. It had, uh, of course, a webcam and microphone, fingerprint reader, wireless LAN, Bluetooth, UMTS, mobile internet, everything. Um, I have disconnected basically everything from this and it still does that same exact problem. So it has to be something going on on the motherboard. Now I looked at eBay and the, well, the offers, the not so trustworthy offers, should I say, for a new motherboard started at around a hundred euro and to get a uh, an offer where you'd say, yup, okay, that uh, that has to be a good one. Uh, that was around 200 euro, something around there. So I was like, okay, it's just not worth getting replacement parts. Especially since I have absolutely no idea how to get this out. I did remove all the screws that I could find, but the thing was still stuck inside. So I have no idea what to do and I don't want to break it. So went up onto eBay, you can already see. I went ahead and I actually had pretty good luck and I managed to get another ThinkPad X201 for only 180 euro. Obviously it didn't come with a docking station or anything like that and that was the whole point of doing this, that I can just use all the accessories that I got for, for this one. Uh, I can also use with this one, including the uh, extended life battery and all that. However, we compared it to, uh, this one does not have a webcam, it does have a microphone. Um, I'm not sure if it has any of this uh, UMTS and Bluetooth or uh, anything like that. Actually, no, looking at this, it does not have the Bluetooth uh, symbol on the screen, so obviously it doesn't have it. It does not have, it doesn't even have a touchpad, it's just a blank, as we compare it to uh, what I had on the other one. As you can see, it has uh, the uh, touchpad right there, fingerprint reader right there. That's all missing on this one. Uh, it does not have a Core i7 processor. It only has Core i5. It does not have 8 gigabytes of RAM. It only has 4. It has a Swiss keyboard layout, which is quite strange. So, what we're going to do in this project, we're going to do a make one out of two operation. We're going to take these all apart and I'm going to try to assemble a, uh, a laptop that is uh, as high-end as possible. We're going to see what happens. So, until then, see you again soon. Thank you for watching.